Well, good morning, bees. Here's a salute to you. Love you sincerely and dearly, babies. You rock. In case you don't know me, I'm Grandpa Peter Coyote. I have a little coyote medicine show on the mornings on HazyRadioNetwork.com. HazyRadio.com. H-E-Y-Z-R-A-D-I-O.com. Uh, we start at 7 in the morning Eastern Time. You may want to tune in for that. She's a... A sweet little uh, program, you know. And there's also, following that, another two hours of Grandpa Coyote and my great friend and associate, Raven. Oh, my goodness. From uh, over in England, Raven Freeman. Ooh, babies. It's a good show. You you know, you really want to be there and get in the glow, okay? Yeah. Speaking of the glow, you know, now, it's come to my attention. That's why I'm cutting this special little tape. It's come to my attention that, you know, a number of my friends in the past year or so have had experienced chance encounters with death, usually with automobile accidents, things like that, but other uh, elements have come along, too, to equally challenge people. And uh, most folks now are through that stuff and into areas of recovery, and it's, it's, it's appearing kind of difficult, yet it's going kind of smooth, you know? So what you, we really need to remember here is that, folks, we've carried a lot of dark energy in our lives. And we may not be aware of that, you know. It kind of exists beneath the surface for most people, you know, until you start getting a little more conscious and a little more present in yourself. Then you become aware of the darkness and everything else you got inside of you because the idea is to bring it all together in, in a triumphant union in your, in your heart. And you know, because we carry this darkness, you know, as I call it, it's just kind of a heavy energy. It mostly surrounds the heart, makes your neck itch once in a while. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm a beautiful little fool sometimes. I'm human as they get, and I love it too. And this is my prayer for you, all of you that have had their lives challenged in this last year or two. Know that it was worth it for one. Know that, too, you needed to uh, centralize your focus. You needed to know what life was all about. You needed to see what you weren't appreciating before, about yourself primarily. And sometimes the only way you can do that, I'm a real experienced traveler in this realm, let me tell you, as far as death, uh, chance encounters with death, boy, I'll tell you. But they've always brought me back to life, those chance encounters. Whenever I've gone to death and... Uh, received of that love that I feel from quote quote the other side man alive it just reminds me of what I'm here for and what I'm up to and what I'm here to do you know and my heart is completely committed to following the flow of the loving heart's path wherever it may go and I'm a cowboy baby so I can ride just about anything you know <laughs> there are some horses for me especially these days it would be unrideable but for the most part I can ride just about anything so I've rode a rather rough trail and ride along with you, babies, I have. And, and we've had some real fun getting it. But one thing I do recognize is that pattern in my life. When darkness kind of uh, gets in there and then uh, starts to take control, so more or less, or starts to sway your thoughts, let's say, and you're thinking more on the depressed side of things than you are on the uh, bright side of things, you know, you're dealing with some hard situations or something, and you're totally distracted from yourself, it's all outside of you. It's all a big drama that you got to deal with. You know, you're getting divorced or you're like, you got three lovers and, you know, whatever. You know, we just get into some real soup. <laughs> real deep stuff, you know. Oh, more thick like goo, man. Stew goo. Oh, God. But see, we start to concern ourselves more with that than with this that's inside of us, our very own heart. We open ourselves to these moments because we need to refocus. So you'll get slammed with God like me a couple of years ago. Pneumonia all out of nowhere, man. I never get sick, hardly ever. Yet a... There it was, and it lasted freaking 30 days, a whole month, man. Wow. I couldn't believe it, because me, I get through it in two or three days. Normally, if I get anything like that. Not this time, man. I got slammed. That's a couple of years ago. But, you know, that gave me some time to centralize and refocus and regain and take a look. Because there's some real trying things going on in my life there a couple of years ago. And I really had to deal a lot to deal with, you know. See how I would got over and I started dwelling on the problems in this world and what could I do, how can I, you know. 
No. See, that's what opened me up to that stuff. And bam, I got slammed. Knocked right on my ass, you know. Right on my back, you know. And I was down for like 30 days. Well, I could get up and down a little bit. I am not wasn't totally debilitated. But man, I had trouble breathing, etc. You know, it was like just a nasty, nasty little illness. Just sapped my, my energy a lot. But kept me in one place. Kept me kind of sleeping and going in between the realms, you know, passing back and forth between what some call the medicine world in here. I call it the creative aspect or the other side. You know, it's what's inside. And see, this is, we get close to death to realize the life that we're living already, the life that's already in us. To embrace that and to centralize our, our, our focus in ourself and to, you know, refocus from the heart. And then these outer problems become less and less difficult, you know, to the point where they just kind of start taking care of themselves. And it's the same thing with your progression in healing, you know. It took me a little while to get over that pneumonia thing, but it was a steady thing, you know, and it happened rapidly. Once it was finally over, it, and then I finally got to that little place where I needed to go, well, then the thing all start turning around in a few days. I'm doing just fine. Thank you very much. It's the same with you, even if you've had major injuries, surgeries, whatever, you know. The healing takes place when you realize the whys and wherefores of where you've been, when you can see the sense in it, when you can see the flow of life taking you there for very specific reasons. It might have been one of the most horrifying moments of your life. But you let go of that trauma the minute you see that it was a loving thing and a loving universe and it took place for some really awful nice reasons and it put you in touch with people and hearts you never would have seen or met before etc etc it starts a whole new cosmic direction in your life sometimes the worst moments you get sent to prison for 30 years and you get out after 30 years you sure have a different view of life than when you went in don't you but babies if you're like seeing what's really been going on for those 30 years and why you had to be out of circulation for 30 years, why you had to be in prison and assist all these other poor bastards that were there, etc. You know, there's always the cosmic heart being served in each and every moment that we live. And, you know, the more you remember that, the more you remind yourself of that, the more you can see of that, then the less of these debilitating effects we're going to experience. You know, I still deal with my issues in a personal way, in a personal level, but for a guy my age, I'm doing awesome, you know, rocking and rolling. In fact, I don't even feel my age. I'm still 22. How about you? <laughs> I don't want to get any older than that. That's a prime year, baby. It's hardest and, and bestest, both, right there together. That was a good year, 22, you know. It's when you start to grow a little bit you finally come out of your childhood and start to shake off the shitty diapers you know what i mean jelly bean you finally start getting a little bit of intelligence not so much you're going to get anything right but enough that you uh, can stay on a good path and set a, a blazer trail for others while you're at it you know 22 is a good year you know especially when you can live it at you know, whatever age I am now, if you can stay at 22 and do that, ho, 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 babies. And I'm with the Mary O Show because you got the ripening and the seasoning you needed and the youthful vigor. <laughs> See, that's what we're all about recovering inside of ourselves, finding life. Now, some of you are going to choose death before the door closes because, you know, that's just me. For example, I had one friend pass not too long ago, you know. Beautiful man, you know, and just full of life and energy, and you would never really expect this dude would die, but yet his presence here, in order to be fully appreciated and acknowledged, had to create the death, had to experience the death, in, other, in order that others could experience the life that he shared with him. See, in death, quite often, and immediately we start saying, oh God, I should have, I could have, I mean, if I'd have spent more time, etc., you see. You start to develop an appreciation for what that person shared for you that you didn't have, frankly, when they were living. And quite often we'll flirt with death ourselves with the same damned idea in mind when we're feeling kind of neglected. That'll draw those chance encounters with death toward you. you got to be careful with your thoughts and your thinking. When you see it going in that direction, the more depressive way, just remind yourself of the beauty inside of yourself, the truth of your loving heart. 
and bring it back to the center. You may not be able to figure things out right now. Well, maybe you don't have to. There'll be an obvious solution when it's time to fix it. When it's really time to heal it, there'll be a real obvious solution. And it won't be just for you. It'll be for everyone involved, too. All of us. You know, everybody. And you'll see it perfectly. You just got to give yourself a few moments, squeeze through the pain, man, you know. I mean, you've been through so much already. What's a little more? Finish it up, even the score. You won't have pain anymore, ever. It's time to dismiss this shit from our lives. And so a lot of people, that's another aspect that's being served here. A lot of people take on major loads of pain physically so that others can be less bothered by it. You know, they pull the energies in and they take it and focalize it in themselves and experience these death moments because they, one, know it's time to come back to life and two, know that they're doing that sacrificial thing again for others. But it's not. It's a loving thing. See, we have to move beyond the idea of sacrifice anything. You don't sacrifice a God-blessed thing here. Not yourself, least of all. This is one of the most treasured presences in the universe. What exists in you, this life. It's meant to be respected and honored and really worshipped, which is to mean to have gratitude for the life you're living, no matter what it is. To see the graciousness, the beauty, the truth that you're able to commit in every moment you live. To understand the reality of truth that lives within you. That how you're sharing that, even when you're just sitting there, you know, suffering, you're radiating your love into this atmosphere and it's healing you and everyone else too around you. See, you, when, you're, when you're injured and ill, you're taking on energies for others. I mean, inevitably, you know, if you're this kind of heartfelt presence, you do that. You can't help yourself. It's the way we've done it for centuries on end now. And so it's almost a program pattern. But if we recognize that, that we're trying to take on the heat for others, and we recognize we can deal with this stuff inside of ourselves and we don't need to deal with everyone else's problems because they're already there anyway. We feel them just the same, whether we recognize it or not. Everybody's feelings are in you and me and everyone else too. We all feel what everyone feels. The collective whole is all about feeling. It's about a commonly shared feeling, see? And that's another reason why sometimes you get broken and shattered in life for a few moments so that you can come back to life. To remind yourself of the feeling of life. You've been absent from it for a long time. So here you got to go to have that chance encounter in death. Because death brings you to life every time, man. Whether it kills you or not. Whether you depart the body or not. It brings you back to life. It reminds you of what life is. What the reality is. You see? You see through the shadowy veils. They go away. And you start to experience both presences as one. Ha ha ha. Now there's your clue. You see, this is how we're closing the doorway on death and many of you have taken energies on for that, for that specific purpose because we're closing that door. How? Well, that's pretty simple. We're bringing the realms consciously together. There's not any other side. It's all one life. And it's lived perfectly inside of you and me too and all the rest of us. Whether we know it or not don't matter. It's sure a lot easier when we catch on. And then we get through these things a whole lot quicker. And, you know, the aspects of now, 2015, what is this, January 10 or 11, something like that? The aspects of 2015 are phenomenal and off the charts. Babies, we're going places we've never gone before this year. And, and rapidly, too, because we feel it in our heart. And the heart is opening and there's no stopping that. And so no matter where you are... In whatever position, injured, ill, or otherwise, you know, healthy as a horse, whatever. Just remember, this is, this is the reality we're living in. It's not the old ways. And we're all going through major adjustments because of it. All of us. Human races all across the globe are feeling it and adjusting into the new reality. Because it has come and is present inside of you and me. And you can feel it. You see, it's there. It's real. And so we're just having to adjust our old behaviors, you know. Stuff that we've done unconsciously before becomes conscious and you got to pay attention when it does and just love it and let it flow through and say, wow, I don't need to do that anymore, do I? Stand in judgment of, of myself and others instantaneously. Don't have to play that game anymore, do I? Hey, look at that. I don't even have to play the dating game anymore. I don't have to play the romance game anymore. I don't have to play any game. I can be real and right from the heart 
And babies, that changes everything in your life. And you'll have a zeal for living, a zest for living that will bring you back to life in a heartbeat. If you've got broken bones, they'll heal instantly, etc. I've seen people do it, myself included. It does happen. You know, healing open wounds. Anything's possible. If we can, if we can supersede death, we can do anything, babies. And we're doing it. So just remember that. Stay in the flow. And it'll keep you healing. Don't you know? And healing is from what? A new old place. A place where we didn't know ourselves. We didn't know anything about the reality of earth and love and so forth. We had little inklings. We had trails we followed, paths we went down, yes. But compared to what we're doing now, how we're opening now, and the massive amounts of love pouring into this earth, whew, that was but a drop in the bucket at the beginning. And this is too, because it just expands from here, and it won't stop. Nobody can stop it. I don't care who's president and who's not. Everyone's here in it, whether you're on this side, that side, or the other side. <laughs> or all sides. You know, we're there, consciously together. Present in a singular moment of heart where the great expansion of creative life begins. We're all there in that essential moment. All of us. Yeah, and in truth, we've barely expanded into living for all we've been through here in these billions of years that we've lived in this earth's reality. It's time to come home, babies. It's time to feel the heart and let it be that which is real within you and your life will reflect it immediately. That's the whole trick here to getting along in this life. That's every bit of it in a nutshell. Grandpa loves for you. Loves you and loves for you too. You know, and through you as well. I just want you to know we're all in it together and I'm pulling strong for you. So is the Mother Earth heart and all the rest of the hearts combined here. We're all unifying. We're all getting a more or less a singular intention in our conscious presence which is to have it better for everyone, ourselves most especially. Because without us being comfortable it's hard for anybody to share comfort with anyone else, you see. That's my secret. <laughs> secret. Hell, I don't have any secrets. I, I bear them all. But that's my little journey, you know. If I got inner peace. I got lots of peace to share. You know, and that doesn't mean I don't have turmoil, but I do have that inner peace. And the turmoil is expiring rapidly. It's changing. It's transforming. It's becoming kind of a uniform and smooth energy in my life. Things are starting to move in a very good direction. I've been having visions of, you know, putting my house back together and in the physical realm in a very real way that's beautiful and you know I'll have to do it a step at a time and let it come as it will but I'm going to do that it's, you know it's reflective of what's going on in the real world here you know we've been we have been all of us kind of neglectful of ourselves in many ways because we've had to deal with that earth presence so much all the problems that go on there the banks and the insurance companies and people that don't want to pay and people that do want to pay and people that don't want to play and people, you know, all the bullshit that goes on here. You know what I mean? And that's been a severe distraction. It's kept many of us from, you know, enlightening ourselves. Well, if you can see it as that, then you see where the distraction is pointing. It's saying, back to your heart, babies. Back to what's simple and real inside of you. That's the secret to all healing of every malady that ever affected any of us. Yeah, babies, just keep it rolling. You're going to be all right. So am I. We're there already. It's just a matter of letting ourselves fall back into it, babies. Just float your way into the ultimate love. That's the only way. If you can't relax into it, you still got a little work to go. <laughs> so says Grandpa, not on the Coyote Medicine Show, but right here in your heart. I'm speaking it now, and I'll put it on the Coyote Medicine Show too, Monday morning, babies. We're going to have it all. <laughs> Grandpa likes to give big packages when he can. <laughs> Love you, babies. Keep a rock.